Our military does an awful lot for us, but sometimes they're surprised when civilians do acts of kindness for them. Here are 10 stories of just that. Number 10. Last Memorial Day weekend, Soldier Keaton Tilson was really looking forward to seeing his family back in Granite City, Illinois for a few days. But Keaton had given the airline last minute notice and only had a standby ticket. He watched several field flights leave without him and he was starting to lose hope of spending that time with his family. But seemingly, out of nowhere, Josh Rainey approached Keaton and bought him an actual $350 ticket so Keaton could get back to his family. Josh was a complete stranger. Keaton made the next flight thanks to that stranger in the airport. Number nine. Like a lot of young people last year, Kimberly Shinsius of Atlanta was out trying to find those crazy mythical creatures for the Pokemon Go game. Then Daniel Wise approached her and asked her what she was doing. When she explained it, Daniel laughed and said he could understand now why everyone was walking around looking at their phones like that. Then the two started talking. Daniel was a Vietnam War veteran. He was an older man and was frail, and he was homeless. He told Kimberly he hated to beg, but asked if she could buy him some food. So she went to a nearby restaurant and got him some food. After eating, he asked her for one more thing, a hug. Then he thanked her for her kindness, saying she was one of the few selfless people in a world that, quote, often turns its back on old men like me and pretends we don't exist. Kimberly took a picture of the two of them together and posted it receiving thousands of likes and being shared more than 800 times. She then started working with Atlanta's Veterans Assistance Programs to get Daniel some help. Number eight. A woman was walking behind a uniformed service woman as they boarded a plane. As they were passing first class seats and preparing to take their seats in coach, a man stood up and told the service woman, sorry ma'am, I'm in your seat. The service woman looked stunned as he walked away and gave her his first class seat. The woman walking behind her went onto her seat in coach and wrote the man who gave up his seat a note with some money and gave it to a flight attendant to give to him. The note read, please accept a drink or snack on me. If everyone treated people the way you treated the service woman, the world would be a better place. Number seven. In New Hampshire, Two service women with the National Guard stopped by a Ruby Tuesday's restaurant a few years back and told their waitress they needed an inexpensive meal because the government was shut down and they had no income. So waitress Sarah Hoydle got them their food and, instead of a bill, gave them this note. Thanks to the government shutdown, the people like you that protect this country are not getting paid. However, I still am. Lunch is on me. Thank you for serving, ladies. Have a good day. Number six. During a layover in Shannon, Ireland, LA entrepreneur Shlomo Rieknitz came upon a group of 400 soldiers who were preparing to eat their paper sack dinners. Rieknitz asked if he could buy all of them a hot meal, but their commanding officer said that would not be necessary. With that, he gave each soldier $50 and told them to enjoy a restaurant of their choice in the airport. He told them, you guys risk your lives to protect me and my family. I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Number five, on a flight heading to Chicago, a passenger decided to strike up a conversation with one of the many soldiers seated on the plane. The soldier told the passenger they were all headed to Great Lakes Air Base for two weeks of special training. They would then all be deployed to Iraq. About an hour after the flight took off, it was announced that sack lunches would be available for all passengers for $5 each. That passenger who spoke with one of the soldiers bought a sack lunch for every single soldier. Number four, a soldier just back on U.S. soil from a tour in Afghanistan wrote about his experience at a restaurant one day. He said he doesn't expect special treatment, but he knows many stores offer discounts to active military personnel. He asked the cashier if that particular restaurant did, and she said, no, sir, we don't. And he was okay with that. But the lady behind the soldier said, rude. Both he and the cashier stared at her for a moment. The lady Let's just call her a woman from now on, because I don't think she was much of a lady. She said, all of you think you're entitled because you're in the military and deserve special privileges. My God. The soldier looked down for a second, raised his head then responded, no ma'am, it's a discount, not a privilege. A privilege is being able to go home to your family every night while living in a free country 
because some people willingly give up their privileges so people like you can have them. The woman was stunned and speechless. And perhaps that's the way she should remain from now on. But the story doesn't quite end there. There was another man standing behind that woman who said, here's your military discount, and he paid the soldier's entire bill. His wife then chimed in, yeah, you deserve it for having to put up with people like her. Number three. Lisa Freeman of Georgia lost her son, Matthew, while he was serving in Afghanistan. It was tough, as it would be for any parent, but Lisa tried to cope as best she could, and one day she decided to try something to help ease her pain of losing him. She took one of his uniforms and made a teddy bear from it, one that she could hug and be with her always. Soon, she was offering to do this for other families who lost servicemen and women, and she called the project Matthew Bears. She does this for families free of charge. Number two. While going to the post office in California, Walter had a little boy run into him. His mother caught up with the little boy, grabbed him by his arm, and told him to watch where he was going. The woman was filthy and had obviously been out on the streets for some time. When Walter left the post office, he spotted the woman and her son, and there was a man with them. So he went up to them and talked. Walter discovered the man had served four tours in the Marines, and he lost his job at a warehouse just a few months ago. He and his wife and son had been living on the street since then. Walter offered the vet $10 for food, but the vet shook his head and asked if he could just walk with him into the Safeway store to get some juice for his son. Most of the time, he said, those Safeway workers would just run him out of the store. Afterwards, the vet extended his hand to Walter and said, Sir, I appreciate the kindness, and if you know of anyone looking for a hard worker, let me know. Walter offered him and his family to come home with him and shower, but the vet declined, saying it would only do more harm than good when they returned to the streets. So what will you do? Walter asked. The vet responded, improvise, overcome, and adapt, sir. Semper Fi. Then Walter watched them as they walked off and disappeared. Walter was angry and thought this was just not the same United States of America he grew up in. And finally, number one. Some time ago, back at Fort Hood, Texas, Elizabeth Laird made it her mission to hug every soldier she possibly could before they went off to war. It is believed she hugged an estimated 500,000 soldiers for luck before they left. And for all that, she was known as the Hug Lady. But in mid-November of 2015, Elizabeth, at 83 years old, was hospitalized after her breast cancer started spreading to her bones. When soldiers found out, they started lining up at her hospital door, each wanting to give her a hug. Hundreds of thousands of them showed up. Retired Army Staff Sergeant Edmund Clark was one of the soldiers she hugged years ago, and he showed up at her hospital room to return the hug. I love you so much, he told her as tears rolled down his cheek. I just had to come and see you. Sadly, Elizabeth lost her battle with cancer a month later, on Christmas Eve. In one final extra story, I want to tell you about Sina. Sina, a 10-year-old black lab, did three tours of duty with the U.S. Marines in Afghanistan. He was a bomb-sniffing dog and became good friends with his owner, Lance Corporal Jeff DeYoung, eight years ago. DeYoung would carry Sina over rivers and shield him from Taliban fire. In return, Sina would show his love for DeYoung by keeping him warm during cold desert nights and comforting him when he lost seven of his military friends over a three-week period. But earlier this year, cancer found Sina, and his body was soon riddled with it. There was nothing that could be done. So in a hero's farewell, Sina's owner dressed up his longtime canine buddy in a blue marine vest and took him to be euthanized in Michigan. Several attended the special ceremony for Cena, and servicemen and women saluted Cena as he was carried past them. De Young's canine friend was put to sleep, and when his body was taken away, it was covered in an American flag. That's all for today. Let us know what you think about the stories in the comments section below. Don't forget to like us and be sure to subscribe for more stories like this. Get addicted to the good stuff.